Hello, Mark Little here again, and today we're just going to take a closer look at this fabulous William III silver tankard. Uh, it's an item that I valued recently, and it is coming up for sale at Tenants Auctioneers Fine Art Sale in July, and it has an estimate of three to five thousand pounds. And what I'm going to go and do now is just give you a quick run through of how I got to that valuation of three to five thousand, and just sort of show you some more details and more features of this fabulous tankard. Well, firstly, hopefully you can see it is a very large tankard. It actually holds three pints, and it was, would have been used for drinking beer or ale. So, th a three-pint tankard, so very large. It was made by John Sutton in London in 1699, and we know this because it's got a nice full set of hallmarks just on the side there. And reading them, you've got the SV, which is the maker's mark for John Sutton, then you've got a figure of Britannia, which is because it's Britannia Standard Silver, which I'll mention shortly, a lion's head erased, uh, and a date letter there. These marks are also matched up on the lid as well, as you can see. And also there's a maker's mark on the handle. And that's exactly as it should be. So, a fabulous tankard. So how did I get to three to five thousand pounds as an estimate? Well, what are its good points? Well, it's clean as a whistle. It's fabulous condition. There's no damage or repairs on it. There's a very small dent on this side, but overall it's very clean. So a good bonus. Next, as we've seen, the marks are incredibly clear. The best way to look at hallmarks and the condition of hallmarks is like the condition of an engine. If the engine's in good condition, it's going to make more money than the engine's in, if the engine is in bad condition. Also, it's got no inscriptions that have been removed on it, and quite often with silver, this would have had a possibly had a coat of arms on here, and it could have been erased by a previous owner. So, how do we know this hasn't been erased, or how do we know this hasn't had an inscription on before? Well, if you get your thumb and forefinger here, so you get your two fingers and feel the gauge of the metal. As you go around, you'll be able to feel if there's any areas of thinning, and that's how we test if an item, a piece of silver's been erased in the past. So there are all its benefits. That's why I've got to sort of 3,000 to 5,000 pounds as an estimate. But why is it not worth more than that? Why not five to 7,000 as some of these tankards by the same maker have made? Well, firstly, there is no arms on here. I would have loved to have seen a fabulous coat of arms. It does actually have an inscription from the owner just on the side there. But a coat of arms would have been fantastic if it had mantling around it as well. Mantling is a term used for the decoration around a coat of arms. That really would have lifted it because it would have given us some serious provenance to go with. Secondly, it's not as commercial as it used to be. This sort of uh, academic or antique silver, it was more collected for its age rather than its beauty, should we say. To me, this is a very beautiful piece of silver. Very beautiful, elegant lines, lovely scroll thumb, thumb piece here, and a lovely scroll handle with a nice little terminal. But in the current marketplace, the flamboyant, the Victorian, the Rococo, the very, uh, you know, almost ostentatious types of silver, the very showy pieces of silver tend to make more. And finally, the one thing that's holding it back a little bit, and I know we said it's very early, it's 1699, isn't it? But that isn't really that old for this type of tankard. It had it have been made 11 years earlier, in the reign of James II, it would have been worth a lot more. But that's just the way the market is. There's less that survived from the reign of James II than there is of William III. So that's that. Now, I mentioned earlier we're going to talk about the Britannia Standard Marks. So what do those mean? Well, in 1697, a new law was imposed that meant that all silver or items of domestic silver like this had to be produced with a higher standard of silver or higher content of silver. Sterling silver is 925 parts per thousand. Britannia standard silver is 957 parts per thousand silver. So why did they change this? Well, at the end of the 17th century, uh, through the reign of Charles II, there was a high exuberance in silver. There was lots of high ornamentation. You could buy tables made of silver even. Huge, huge pieces of silver. And where was all this silver coming from? Well, there wasn't a huge amount of it. So what they had to do, or what people were doing illegally, was melting down the currency. By melting down the currency, that was debasing the currency. So all the coins that were being melted, that had a knock-on effect because there weren't enough coins to mint. So they increased the standard of the silver. Britannia standard silver, as I said, was from 1697 to 1720. 
and the identifying features are a figure of Britannia, which you can see just here, and then also the leopard's head erased, which are again heraldic terms. So again, there it is, a fabulous William III silver tankard made by John Sutton in London in 1699. It carries an estimate of three to five thousand pounds at tenants auctioneers, July fine art sale.